Welcome back, everyone, to episode 22 of the Rally Report podcast. With me today, we got the number one French player and French national champion, who is no stranger to the big stage, and we've seen him time and time again uh, through his performances in platinum events. An absolute phenomenal mover in the game, nicknamed the Acrobat. Roll number 13. Welcome, Greg Marsh. How are you? Good, good. Well, could be better, as I said. Uh... Yeah, you want to share the bad well... news to start this off? <laughs> It was a bad news, yeah. Well, this is the first time I'm um, having the COVID, actually. So mm. I was pretty lucky for the last two years <laughs> not having it. But it had to happen once, so yeah. But it's not too bad, actually. Not too yeah. Bad. How many times have you been COVID tested out through these events? Oh. <laughs> nose is, nose is destroyed. At this point. <laughs> I don't even know why it's been... Uh, yeah, now two years and every at least every week we, we do one. So, yeah, it's been so oh many. Yeah. Every tournament before we leave, when we arrived on site, and then every three days during the competition. Do you so still have to be alone in the rooms and everything? No, no, no. Now, that's, it's, that's, okay. now it's over. It's been, uh, yeah, maybe the first year and a half. Well, since January, it's... Uh, it's a bit better. I mean, we can do almost whatever we want. Uh, we can share the room together. Um, not shining too much uh, times with the with the crowd and everything, but mm. at least uh, we can go out and have like dinner and meet the people we want. And well, not no coaches, no physios on site. Which is so a, before COVID, you were allowed to have your coach come to you in between games, right? Yeah. 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 Now that's not a thing. You can't be no, coached. No, the, the PSA stopped that thing. Well, because of COVID, of course. Yeah. But now it's, well, it's, it's on under the discussions, actually. And I think from September, it's going to be back again. I hope so. Mm-hmm. Uh I mean, even if there was no coaches, we could help each other between players, you know, and every, right. yeah, yeah. between every game, well, between the French players, we used to yeah, chat together and it's always good to have a little help and there's some stuff that you don't see on, on well, inside the court. Like you, mm-hmm. Sometimes it could be really, really important to just have a little support and and that's something, yeah, we... I kind of miss that that coaching stuff. Uh, it's uh, it's it's different. It's different. So what happens? Uh, have, has that been a struggle for you, particularly just being like being alone? Because I see the players just being alone, just staring far off. Yeah. Like, what are you thinking about then? Are you, has it has that I been mean, tough for you? The first the first few months was okay because we were out of tournament for more than six months, so we were just mm. lucky and. And I mean, happy to to have something to play. So I didn't really mm. care if I was. I had to stay uh, the whole day in my room, and I was just uh, happy. And the motivation was there because, mm. yeah, we finally could get some competitions with the with the players, you know. And that was uh, that was. I mean, that wasn't fun, but at least uh, we could play. Could play and, yeah, yeah, and do some some matches, some proper matches, because it's not like training. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, after, after a few months, uh, well, it depends if you go deep in the tournament and you win matches and then <laughs> the week starting to get long. <laughs> yeah. If you have day, days off after every matches, well, that could be really long. I, yeah, mm. when I, I spend like maybe a week in Egypt, yeah, watching yeah. The, watching the ceiling all all week in my room, <laughs> just going out for for yeah, just practice mm-hmm. and your match actually. So you we don't... kind of wish at this point now, with now being April of twenty twenty two, they'd kind of start have, allowing that back in. No, no, that's why it feels yeah. it feels really nice to to have a, like a proper life, like normal life, and yeah, and, like just having. Having food like outside, uh, yeah, talking with your friend, yeah, and yeah, 
that's the big difference. Do you yeah. do you have a go to PSA player or very good friend that you you like sharing the room with? If you were allowed to, like getting coached. Of course, all the French guys. All the French, close, yeah. Because we 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 train together all year, and we yeah we all pretty close, but. Uh, no, they've been sharing a lot with uh, Nicky Müller as well. <laughs> we, we're from the same yeah. generation. He's uh, he's been in hot form as of late. Yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He beat me actually. Since he beat me in uh, in London, he's uh, he's on fire now. So <laughs> so no no more sharing the room with Nicky. <laughs> <laughs> no, <clears throat> no. Actually, he's a, he's a really good friend. We mm. we we play golf together. Uh, yeah. And uh, there's so many, yeah. He's uh, he's, he speaks perfectly French as well. Oh, I didn't so know that. That that helps oh, wow. as well. <laughs> yeah. And no, no. There's all. I mean, we have a good uh, a group of players who play golf, and that's where we can share sometimes outside the court as well. Yeah. No, like, I've noticed. I've noticed a lot of players like. Was is it an easy transition from squash to golf? You think there's some similarities? Of course, yeah. yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, similarities on the on the swing, on the on the mental side. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's different because you have time to think about it on on, on the golf course, you know. <laughs> but that's different compared to the squash. But there's so many things that you can yeah. uh, walk. Yeah, you can walk on on it and and the swing as well. It's it's a it's a game with the ball, you know. So mm. so the feeling that you have with the with your hand, it's a bit similar. Yeah, and and when you have this uh, sensation to to put the ball exactly where you want, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's the same feeling as as squash, I guess. Yeah. All in one, the neck, same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah. It's and also, great. you're you're a huge cycler, right? You like cycling. Yeah, yeah. Is that out of just training purposes, or you actually just love cycling? I used to do a lot. I mean, I used to do cycling only for like part of the training mm -hmm. uh during the summer time like when we had a lot of time in front of us before the tournaments and get ready physically mm -hmm. so it's been like yeah maybe more than 10 years that i'm doing this in the uh, summer mm -hmm. but since the covid uh we we had more times of course and after the the first lockdown i had the uh, well a lot of times in front of me and uh, that's where I well I built my own bike as well and I got oh really, wow I you built it well, I built I mean I I bought yeah, 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 yeah. Every, <laughs> every little piece, pieces together and then and then yeah I started to love it uh, especially where we based in Aix-en-Provence there's uh, in the south of France of course the weather is is pretty good most of the time Mm -hmm. And we have good uh, mountains and small roads that it's not really dangerous as well. Mm. So gotcha. yeah, I I love it, and we have a good group of friends as well. We're doing this here, yeah. Um, not squash players, but that, just friends. Yeah, that's just yeah. friends. They can they can compete as well because there's always, a, of course, a, kind of a, a fight. You know, when you go yeah. up, when you go uphill and. And we have some great um, um, mountains as well that we can ride together. It's just so beautiful places, and mm. I just yeah, I love it now. And I I nice. didn't stop since the COVID, so so keep keep going, yeah, yeah. Just even during the season, I'm trying to keep going, and and trying to avoid all the impact, you know, on the court. Yeah, that you can, you know, it's been uh, 15 years on tour, and I've been. Uh, <laughs> hurting my body a little bit so now yeah. it's uh, it's good to do something uh, uh, that still can improve your fitness but without the the yeah the tension and the impact on the floor and mm. and we we do a lot of matches during the week so if you can uh, you know take it a bit more softly <laughs> uh, sometimes it's uh, it's it's yeah it's better yeah yeah how how do you feel about your squash game right now? I know we just wrapped up the British Open a couple weeks back, um, and I saw you aren't <coughs> participating in the Manchester Open. Wasn't sure if because of the COVID thing, or you just decided you didn't want to participate in that. No, one? Manchester was not in the plan. I was. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew I had to take a little bit, uh, like three weeks uh, off. I mean, no tournaments before mm -hmm. 
before the end of this month because it's going to be really really busy um yeah after that um and i played yeah i played the three the three tournaments in england last month where i was a bit uh well there was some uh some tough times uh personally uh mm -hmm. since last year so i struggled a little bit uh mentally but it, i mean i took it as a uh challenge you know uh to how uh, how do you you're you're i mean you just said you've been on the tour about 15 years now how do, how do you stay positive when you know you're having a down couple of months things aren't working the way you wanted to results aren't coming in how do you stay positive well of course there've been a lot of uh, <laughs> rough times but yeah well after the covid it was a good uh, i mean that happened at the right time for me really um, mm -hmm. i mean i was uh, i was playing a bit better but i was a bit uh, uh, scared because i was during the two months of lockdown i didn't feel i wanted to play anymore and oh wow shit and well i wasn't the same um person maybe and i was the hunger or just yeah, burnt out the, the hunger wasn't the same so i felt like wow well, uh if i don't want it i should just put the racket away and mm -hmm. and do something else do what i like and and there was no uh tournaments on the calendar anymore so i had no goals you know no mm. so so i think that was the main reason and and after after a few weeks when we had the first uh, event on the calendar I, I felt oh well now now that's what I want to do uh, I always love playing squash since I'm 2 years old <laughs> and that's all that's my life you know the squash has been my life for yeah. for 30 years now and and yeah I found back this uh, this hunger and this motivation after two, three, four months of no squash. And of course, the more you play, I mean, the more you play well, the more you, you feel like doing more and, mm -hmm. and enjoying every time when you go on court. But yeah, I felt, I felt much better with the racket. Uh, I could do whatever I wanted, uh, less pressure on me. And yeah. And then I played my best season. Yeah. So, so it, yeah, it happens at the right time, maybe. So right now, your hunger, the hunger is right now very, very yeah. much so fired up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, it's just it was just a, a, a tough time personally. Um, mm. But are you feeling I, better now? Yeah, the, well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just uh, it's just uh, yeah. I, I need I needed to to go. For, I mean, to go forward and. Mm push myself and trying to think about the future and yeah and now i feel yeah now i feel like i want to i want to fight again i want to uh, i want to enjoy i want, just want to enjoy the last uh, few years that i'm going to be on tour you know it's uh, i know it's the change that we have and it's not easy every day but it's um, it's i mean it's a nice life actually <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah um, I mean, I do what I love, and and even if I, as I said again, it's not easy. But well, I'm not doing. I'm not gonna do this for all my life. So I need to enjoy the last uh, the last few years. I'm 30, 32 years old now, and yeah, I don't yeah. have limits now. Uh, I'll see. Yeah. Right. I was. I actually was gonna ask you this. It was because you brought up your age. It's funny because when I see you play, still you move like you're. 20 21 right but yeah. obviously you know the yeah. age has changed for you H how do you continue to stay that mobile are you putting in are you training differently are you putting in more work if you could tell us the secrets hopefully not a lot of competitors yeah. are listening in right now but <laughs> well mentally i feel like i'm 20 so mm -hmm. i don't feel like i'm gonna stop in like five four five years mm -hmm. uh, physically i feel fine as well i'm i feel like I can move like this for so many years again, yeah. <laughs> but cause, cause I'm, yeah, cause I'm doing a, I think a good job with my physical coach. 
Uh, we've been working together for the last 12 years, I think. And he knows me perfectly. He knows when I'm tired, when I need to rest, when I need mm. to push. And that's, that's a discussion that we have every day. Yeah. Uh, to, yeah, to, to maintain this, um, this, uh, incredible fresh, movement you have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This fresh movement and this fresh, uh, um, feeling that I have, um, And of course, the bike helped me a lot because that's that's what I said. It, it yeah, uh, it saved a lot of uh, uh, injuries because, of course, mm. I have to to stay far from injuries, and I that's what I'm trying to do every day. A lot of stretching, a lot of uh, well, taking care of your food, of your hydration, uh, yeah. So the sleep everything you you do everything you do to get, uh, every day it's uh, it's yeah it's important it's it's you can't really you can't at that time now we can't really be in like 80 or 90 percent on on court you know because yeah. uh, everyone is fit everyone is ready there's a more there's way more players than it used to be mm. um And everyone has the feeling that they can beat anyone, you know, so... Yeah, you got the young guys coming up now. Of course. Coming, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to wanna keep... Uh, stay on the top, uh, every day it's a new... Well, you have to push every day. And yeah. you can't really put something aside, you know, and, and that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, and, yeah. Greg, you've been staying located in France from the beginning of your career, right? Yeah. Have you ever had thoughts of, I want to move somewhere else to train? Yeah. 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 yeah well, before the COVID actually, I was, uh, two months in New York. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to see if I could see myself located there. Mm -hmm. Um, Because uh, we had like four tournaments in a row in yeah. the States, like Detroit, Pittsburgh, uh, Chicago. And I said to myself, okay, I'll, I'll stay in New York uh, between the tournaments. It's going to avoid all the the back and forth, the, the, the traveling. And yeah. of course, the jet lag as well. So I thought, yeah, maybe I can see if I can, well, can see myself there. And I loved it. Uh, of course, it's uh, New York. It's uh, it's a great place, but mm -hmm. I just missed the. I mean, the the way of life that we yeah. have here, um, being outside the the nature side. Mm -hmm. uh, it just you know I out here I take my bike and in five minutes I'm like in the middle of nowhere almost and. And the sun is here, the, the sea is like 20 minutes away, the mountains for, for winters are like an hour away. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a good spot for, for training. We have all the top players yeah. training at the same place. With That's good, some really uh, good players there. So, yeah, yeah with, with good, good um, conditions as well. Um, of course, the Federation is doing... Uh, some good job to, to, to help us in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, then I have the, the Marseille, the airport is quite, quite close as well. So when you have to travel even for league matches or it's pretty easy. So yeah, everything, it's pretty central as well. It's in Europe. Uh, when you have to travel in the U S it's, it's not too far. And then you have to go to Asia. It's not too far. Mm, that's true. Uh, I didn't think of it that way. Even yeah, yeah. in, 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 we go a lot in, in Egypt. So same, it's not too far. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, a, the setup is nice. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know if I'll stay there for the rest of my life, but, but, uh, yeah, I love the, well, the, this, just the life here and I have my friends of course, and my family. Yeah. And, but I, yeah, I'm not, uh, closed of, uh, you know, mm. thinking about going somewhere and that's interesting. Which, yeah. Yeah. I, was, I mean, it's curious because, well, I do think France was like one of the first countries with squash that really 
made a hub for players to train, making a whole facility. And I, now I think like other countries are really creating that as well. Like I see with England, they're really starting up academies there. Mm. So, so I was just in, in, in Barcelona. I saw there's a huge academy there. Mm. So I was just thinking like, if, you know, if, if, if you were to pick one other place right now to move, to be stationed there as a professional squash player, where would you pick? Well, the first thing that you have to see is the, um, the, um, the amount of players that you can find and hit mm. with every day, you know? That's the most it's important. Not, yeah. It's not easy to find a good group of players uh, being there almost all year um, where where you can, you know, have fun with the guys and that they can be, they can be good friends as well, you know? So, yeah. So the first thing would be to have good competition matches, you know? Uh, mm. So of course, Egypt would be the best place because, <laughs> yeah. because they, yeah, there are so many and there's so many clubs. Um, every day you can meet with the top 10 guy. Right. And, and different. You know, with a different strat- strategy, uh, different way of playing. You know, so so Egypt would be the best, but the life is really different. Yeah, uh, it'd be tough so, to adjust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's there's Miami. Uh, there's a new um, group in Miami, like uh, uh, Wael and Lindy did. Uh, oh, with Diego. With Diego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miguel is there sometime. <clears throat> Uh, I was thinking about that place because uh, same, it's a nice place to live, I guess. Beautiful weather all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there's New York, of course. Uh, mm. But but same, when you have to play all the tournaments in Europe or in Egypt, uh, it's a long trip all the time. You know? Right. So, uh, so yeah, I, I didn't realize the calendar is unbelievable. The amount of travel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I didn't especially really think of since that. COVID, since COVID, we didn't have time to rest. Um, so, so, and it's not easy traveling as well with all the the papers and mm. the COVID test and everything. And so, yeah, traveling is a, yeah. it's something that you have to take. Uh, uh, it's a huge part of the of the season, you know. So, yeah. uh, if you can avoid all the I mean, you, you, you're going to be tired anyway. It's, it's not, it's not playing squash that make you tired because we're used to it, but it's, it's just, uh, trying to deal with the jet lag and, uh, long hours in the flights and stuff, which, which is, uh, which is different. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's an underrated aspect of becoming, being a professional, the traveling, the getting used to everything, different time zones. But, yeah. No, people yeah. doesn't really. We, oh, as someone who's just watched, I think all you're doing is playing the game. Yeah, you don't realize what yeah. happens behind yeah. the scenes. But mm-hmm. also, Greg, what are your thoughts on the next generation of French players? Because I, they're coming up. Like, <coughs> do you think the future is in bright hands? Or like, I also want to curious. Are you, do you feel pressured about how hungry they are? Like, do, is that contagious? Like, what are your thoughts on them? Uh, well, I can see them every day. <laughs> Uh, training yeah. at the same at the national center. Uh, of course, there's uh, Baptiste who's younger than me and mm-hmm. he's already well, he's top twenty, and and it's good because we can push it so, each other as well every day. Yeah, and then Victor's graduating, so I heard he's moving back to France. Yeah, and yeah, Victor's so. gonna be there as well. Most well, not every day, but but at least two two or three times a week. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, it's going to be good for practice as well. And yeah. he's, he's young, <laughs> he's way younger <laughs> and he's, you can see he has the, he has the motivation. Yeah. Well. That's, that's what he wants. And, and it's a different game, uh, as, as mine, but that's, that's good to have someone like this for, for, for training. Do you and, think Batiste has a more similar game to yours than Victor? Uh, Baptiste is, is a bit, it's the opposite maybe of Victor. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'm, I'm probably in the middle. In the middle, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so no, it's, it's, and Mathieu Castagne is still there. Maybe. Oh, you can't forget he, about him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so Sébastien as well, Bonmaré. Mm. Uh, there was Benjamin Aubert. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all the young guys the under, under 19. Now they, they, every day we can sometimes eat with them. 
and and they can hit the ball pretty well. So so yeah, it's it's ha- it's nice to have a good group like this. Uh, yeah, they have the motivation, uh, but again, it's 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 about putting everything together every day. Yeah, uh, having the the right mindset uh, and the right organization around you. Mm-hmm. And and see if you can make it to the top uh, top thirty or top forty in the world. Because if not, you're not gonna make a good living and and yeah. do something else. You know, so it's it's not easy. Yeah, yeah. About that. So now you're currently ranked thirteen right now, and what last month you were eleven. What do you think is missing, or what do you think you have to do to break into that top ten? Because it I feel like you've been knocking, you're like right on knocking on that door right now. And maybe you could give us a, also a match. I kind of wanted to talk to you about your British Open with Paul Cole. Just what do you, what do you, what did you learn out of that one? Um, well, I think, um, I think it's all about having the confidence uh, yeah. in every rally. Um, I was a bit uh, too too soft maybe in my shots that I I couldn't really finish the rallies. Mm-hmm. Um, I know physically I can, I'm almost on top of the guys. It's not the the part that I need to work on. I mean, physically I, I, I can compete with everyone and I know, I know in my head I can beat anyone. Yeah. Um, it's just having this, um, Ability to do it every tournament, you know, uh, um, dealing with the pressure if you if you the favorite or not, uh, mm. and yeah, that's that's just the mental side that I need to work uh, a bit more, a bit more relaxed, uh, a bit more focused on what I have to do uh, at the moment, you know. Um, so more and- than anything, you think for you, it's. The physical confidence is there. The squash, that you think it's like the mental aspect? Well, technically, of course, I have I have some stuff that I'm working every day. Mm-hmm. Of course, because I need to find this right consistency as well to to put the right shot at the right time. Yeah, a, a, every every point and every game, you know, and doing and and the the toughest thing is to do it all season, you know. Yeah. I I showed that I can do. Uh, I can beat almost everyone, but doing mm. it every week and every season, uh, it's it's not easy, and that's uh, that's where I need to be more, yeah, more consistent, uh, more stable, uh, maybe mentally. Yeah, and and I've been working a lot on this. <coughs> Sorry, mm. and and it's 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 much better since, of course, since yeah. two years. But uh, I feel like I I have a, a huge uh, a huge gap again uh, still to 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 work on that kind of stuff and and yeah. I need I mean, to do so more. close it's right there yeah right there. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But I need I need more yeah more matches at that level that's why I'm gonna stay maybe uh, uh, in in Cairo uh, before um, after after the World Open and before Alguna oh wow uh, so I'll be there for like almost a month. Mm-hmm. And um, and yeah, trying to to fight with those uh, existing kids <laughs> seems nuts over there what they're doing. <laughs> and uh, and yeah. yeah, and find uh, yeah, find the right uh, balance and and compete with these guys. Yeah, that's yeah, what I do. yeah. Gotcha. And Greg, if you could take your time on this one, but reflecting on your career, what has which match do you think was the biggest career win? And which one was the toughest loss for you? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, there's been so many loss. <laughs> um, uh, the biggest win, uh, I don't know. I would, I would say uh, when I won the 50k in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, yeah, two, three years ago, maybe. 2019, right? Yeah. 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 Um, that was a that was a good win. Uh, the final against uh, Zaid Mohamed, um, mm. and then I had 
I had so many good memories in in Nantes, in France. Yeah, uh, oh, that I tournament won. is so amazing. That, it needs yeah, to be rough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The atmosphere is just amazing, and having the crowd uh, behind you supporting. Um, I won it three times, but the smaller tournaments, and then when I reached the semis in, uh, in when, it, when it was a 70k against mm. uh, Joel Makin, I lost three two, but uh, I beat Rosner in the quarters, and and yeah, that was the the feeling with the crowd was just a, a joke, like yeah, was, I think twelve hundred people. And when you know it's it's your crowd, it's yeah. all, I'm sure yeah, it's, uh, yeah. they're rooting Everything for you. Was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was sharing <laughs> for me, of course, and and yeah, the, just the the feeling that I had on court, uh, yeah, it go it, yeah. it gave me goosebumps actually. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah, and of course, playing playing in New York in Grand Central was it's always a bit special, mm-hmm. and. Just winning every match is on this court. It's a, it's a great feeling as well. Yeah. You think it's because of the crowd with Grand Central, or yeah, just because just of the location? The, yeah. The just because it's a prestigious tournament. Mm. Uh, just the place, just the Grand Central Station. Seeing so many people walking in front of the of the court and trying yeah. to uh, what, yeah, what is it? Is it squash? Wow, it's amazing and. And then you can, yeah. There's a great, there's a great atmosphere. The, yeah. the just the, the the lights and. Oh my god! Is there? Is, do you know why it's not a platinum event right now? I just saw I, that it was. It was supposed to be in January. Yeah, yeah, and that got canceled, right? They, they moved it like for uh, in three weeks now. Yeah, but, yeah. Because it was uh, a short uh, time to to do it again and to. To organize it in a different way, yeah. uh, they decided to to do like a uh, like a gold <coughs> for men and women. Yeah, and so they reduced the the size of the draw mm. and to fit uh, to fit everyone in that week. Uh, uh-huh. But it's gonna be back on next year in January. Oh, if yeah. Ever. So I just yeah. saw it. And I was just like, wait, this this uh, the, there are people dropped out. I, what happened? I realized it's a it's a gold mm. tournament now. Yeah, right. yeah, and it's right after the, the Europeans, so oh, busy. That's why I think people, well, yeah. not everyone is playing, and we have the World Open right after. So right, that's the most important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, Greg, <coughs> I'm going to move into something what I call a quick fire segment. I'm just going to ask you a bunch of quick questions, and you can answer however you like it. Hopefully, you enjoy it. So to start off, we're going to do some squash ones. Greg, if you're 10 love, 10 zero down in the fifth game. Are you the player to go for the Nick or are you going to play it out? Um, I think I'm going to go for it. Yeah. You go for it. Get out of there as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. What are your thoughts on best of three? You like it or you don't like it? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't a big fan uh, yeah. at the beginning because uh, I think it's it changed a lot of the, I mean, the... Um, The aspect of squ- I mean squash is been I think for me it's a big battle physically yeah and and you change the nature of the game of course when when you do a <coughs> sorry best of three mm-hmm. but but I think for the crowd and I, I was a bit scared that we could uh, have like some quick matches with no mm. one. If you're not into it in the first game, it can be really quick, you know. And I was a bit right. scared where you can find some easy wins in 20 minutes, and the crowd would be disappointed, and and you can't really get into the that, that rhythm, you know. Yeah. And but we could see that players adapted pretty well, mm-hmm. and and we had some long matches. I was incredible. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> and I think we should. Sorry, I'm gonna drink a little bit. No, take your time. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I think we we uh, we should we should live like this for the best of five for the platinums and and all the other tournaments should be best of three. Oh, all that's uh, no one has mentioned that idea. That's all pretty... the way, but all the, like tennis, you know, mm. like tennis. That's what they do for the Grand Slam. 
they do best of five for the four Grand Slam, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then uh, and then the all the the Master Thousand and the all best of three. So that's what we should do. <clears throat> but all the way to the final, not starting the tournament. So you don't like it how they switch back to the best of five? Not a fan? No, because having to adapt uh, a best of three, two best of five during the same tournament, it's not easy. Uh, mm. You can't really prepare yourself the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a different game, you know, it's a different mentality. Um, Do you find yourself more attacking in best of three? Like what are what are some of the things you'd approach differently? Attacking, I don't know because you don't want to take too many risks as well yeah. at the beginning. Or do uh, you like kind of want to more rally it out? Yeah, you just want to push yourself in every every rally. You know, like you know, you can't really give up what one point. You know, so yeah, so every point it's a big fight, and and that's what people I mean enjoyed. I think. Uh, uh, we could see at the Canary Wharf. Oh, that was insane. That's just the fans and all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can fight for everybody because you know it's not going to... Uh, I mean, you're not going to play for two hours. And and you can't really... I mean, you you don't have to save yourself, you know. And physically, you don't have to stay fresh, you know. So Yeah. So Screw it. I'm just going to... Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's uh -huh. what I, I like it, actually. But, of course, it's uh, it, it allowed... Uh, Opportunities for upsets, yeah, yeah, for upsets and and young players. I mean, and and they have nothing to lose. And when you're favorite, uh, and if you don't straight into the game, like uh, the first first point has to be, uh, you have to feel well from the first point. You know? Yeah, and that's not easy, but that's true. But that's why we should leave. I think we should leave it because the main the main part of squash would be like the best of five you know you yeah. have a, you have a new strategy uh you know you have a, you can do a, a, a good comeback you know when you're too low down it's not over mm -hmm. uh that's something you don't really see in the best of three you know and yeah and i i think it's good to have both uh like like as i said like they do in tennis yeah yeah um so you know last was it last week the doubles were happening um, what are your thoughts on doubles, softball doubles? You like it? Actually, I never played doubles. You never played doubles? <laughs> no. I mean, I played doubles on a normal court, you know, when we, when yeah, we want to have fun, you know, but, but I never played this proper uh, game on, you know, with the, the, low, the lower team, mm. the big courts. Uh, there's a, I think it's a, it's a total different strategy, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. I think... Yeah, I might enjoy this, but I, I never tried. Sure. So, yeah. so, if you were to, who would you pick as your partner if you could pick anyone? Mm. Who do you think would be a good partner for you? Maybe, maybe Baptiste would be good. Yeah, because he can hit some pretty nice skill, uh, nice skills <laughs> um, from everywhere. Mm -hmm. And with the lower chin, uh, that can do some damage. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that could be, yeah, it could be yeah. a nice uh, team. <laughs> um, Greg, do you like solo practicing better or you like practicing in groups? Uh, I like both. I actually, I, I do a lot of solo. You don't uh, mind soloing? A lot yeah. of players I have on seem to not really like soloing. That yeah, yeah, but I like it, yeah. actually. Um yeah, I love uh, spending time on court. I, I've been doing this all my career. Yeah, I just put my headphones and 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 yeah, just thinking about the 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 feeling with the with the with the ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could I could spend like two hours on court doing solo. That and, is unbelievable. I could never and, do <laughs> and I love I love group sessions as well. So yeah, yeah I don't mind. Um, doing this. What are your thoughts on nicknames for PSA players slash what do you think of your own nickname? You like it? Yeah, it's been a while actually. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh yeah, Joey Joey uh got that name for yeah, maybe ten years ago or something. <laughs> and um, like, yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. It's uh uh I don't know if I'm diving as much as I used to be, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, no yeah, I did uh 
yeah, I think it fits it fits pretty well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what are your thoughts on the commentators? You like the commentators, or do you wish they switch it up, have different people on? I think they're doing that now. They they yeah. more. I think they are. Yeah, they are more uh, people who are like. Uh, even um, players who, who not even on the top. Uh, uh, there's people as well. They were top players, mm-hmm. which is good to uh, hear what they have to say as well with the new generation. And yeah, and Joey Joey is doing a good job. I think uh, um, maintaining this um, this kind of fun. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe sometimes he speaks about uh, too much stuff about uh, that not related to squash. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he should speak about more yeah. about the strategy and who's doing the right choice or anything. But but no, part of this, uh, Joey and uh, and PJ are, are I think they are a great combination together yeah. and. And they're great guys, and yeah. Uh, would you want it? Would, would you ever want to do it? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know if right now I, I would be uh, good enough in English for <laughs> for commentating, but yeah, maybe after maybe after the career, maybe I would I would try. It's not yeah. easy, you know, when you yeah. when you when you're playing the tournament and you want to stay focused and. And, and right. you, you, you're still playing against these guys, so so you don't want to say too much. And you, don't wanna, <laughs> you know, it's it, yeah. It's not uh, gotcha. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on coaching post career? Is that something you might want to do? Coaching? Mm, not really. I don't think so. Uh, huh. I I'm not a big fan of uh, coaching, but I don't know. I maybe I'm not. Uh, mature enough to to think about this. Uh, mm-hmm. If there's some good opportunities in the future, maybe I will. Uh, but I don't see myself like spending hours and hours on court again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fair. Um, yeah, I think I did a I did a lot uh, running <laughs> on court <laughs> since uh, all these years. But that's fair. Yeah. I, I yeah. don't. I don't think so. Actually, yeah. Um, okay, Greg. Who do you think is the most underrated player on tour? Um, in terms of uh, ranking and yeah, I mean, whatever you think is underrated. I think. Uh, I think Ramit Tandon. Mm, that's is, good. Uh, yeah. It could be way better. I mean, the skills he has with his racket and when I practice with him uh, well sometimes I feel like he could be uh, at least top 15 or top wow. 10 maybe not because it's it's uh, it's another it's another step you know you have to be really consistent and everything but yeah he's, he's not even top 30 and he could uh, I mean on one match I think he can beat anyone he's uh, when you play uh, you know the Ali game yeah. On with him, uh, the 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 touch and the racket he has can be really it's pretty good. Can do some damage. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, who do you think? Who's the one player you don't like playing against? Um, I'm not. I'm not that tall, you know. So, <laughs> so playing a guy like Mossad or or like you know like big guys mm. uh, taking a lot of space on court uh, when I have to go around all the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's not my favorite, maybe. That's, uh, that's fair. That's fair. Um, okay. We're going to move on to a quick couple of life-related ones as well. What is the best purchase you've made and the worst purchase you've made in your life? <laughs> uh, my best purchase... Uh... I have no idea, actually. Uh, Is it the bike? Yeah, I think I can spend a lot of money in my bike, and <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing, but I like it, and mm-hmm. and it's not useless, actually. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's a good uh, investment, <laughs> <laughs> uh, even if I'm not gonna 
win money after this. Uh, it's uh, it's something that I like and I enjoy. And it's like it's like golf, you know. When I yeah. put some money in golf, uh, as soon as I enjoy doing this, and I know it's it's for my it's it's good for my mental health. Yeah, you know? right. Uh, I don't mind. Mm-hmm. And my worst uh, <laughs> investment, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm, I, I pretty, I'm pretty safe. Um, I, yeah. I, I think. I mean, I don't do like some stuff uh, on on the rush. You know, I just, uh, I, I'm trying to feel. Uh, I mean, to think about everything I'm buying. Oh. Uh, but of course, yeah, I guess been... this, this question would be better for players like Rodriguez. Who just seems... <laughs> well, if he can, if, 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 if that's what he's, he's enjoying, you know, yeah, any, for sure. anything you enjoy, if you put money in, into cars, I love cars as well. I can put money in cars. I can put money yeah. in, yeah, in bikes in everything. But, but, uh, I'm no, I'm more, I'm more stable. I'm not, uh, you know, young anymore when you can, you know, as soon as you want something, just go ahead and buy it. Some money in shoes as well. Maybe that was my worst uh, (laughs) investment when I was young. (laughs) Uh, I could buy some uh, Nike shoes uh, uh, because I just love them and and I just didn't think. And now I feel, wow, that was just ridiculous. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Greg, do you, do you like drinking, drinking alcohol? Uh, I like it. I'm not. Uh, I'm not doing it every. every yeah. Really often. Do, you, do you have a favorite drink of choice? Mm, mojito, maybe. Yeah, it's a it's a good one. <laughs> um, and then, do you like coffee or tea? Uh, I don't drink coffee at all. No coffee uh, at all. No coffee at all. I don't like. I hate the taste. I hate that. Wow, that's so, so tea. Yeah, tea sometimes, but yeah, uh, no, no coffee. Yeah. Okay, and then. Favorite non-squash athlete? Um, well, there's there's so many actually. <laughs> but, yeah, in golf, I I love Tiger, of course. Hey, yeah. Uh, I like Jordan Spieth. Um, yeah. In tennis, I love I love Rafa. Um, Rafa fan, yeah. Federer as well, of course. Yeah. But but both of them, I'm, I can't choose between them. Uh, some you know there's some guys they say well you have to choose between Team Rafa or Team Roger. I was about to ask you to pick between the two. But uh, I can't choose actually. I love yeah. both of them. It's the fighting of Rafa and the the class of Roger mm. um, and what what are they able to fight after all all these years? Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, unbelievable. It's just uh, yeah impressive. And, and yeah, is there a favorite? Squash player for you to watch who's active on the tour right now? Active? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess Ali. Mm. Nice to watch for you. I, Ali is, yeah, the way he, he I mean, the way he, he controls the court, the way he moves you around. Mm. And yeah, he, gotcha. he's, he's smooth, you know, he's, uh, he's easy. He's, it looks easy. I mean, it looks easy. Yeah. That's that's true. Um, gotcha. I'm gonna now wrap this up with the Instagram questions I got for you. A lot of people <laughs> seem to be curious about your diet, Greg. Do you have a very specific diet? Not at all, actually. <laughs> Not at all. I mean, no. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to be. I mean, careful. I I don't hit like shit stuff. Uh, <laughs> I mean. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, I'm not like vegan or something. I, mm. I, my parents were, they, they owned the restaurant. So my oh, wow. father, my father was a chef. So I always grew up in a, in the, in the kitchen, you know? Yeah. So anything I wanted. So you to know eat, what good food is. I know. Yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm French, of course. And I know, <laughs> I know exactly. Yeah. What is good. And I love having good food and I can spend a lot, a lot of money as well mm. on a good restaurant. Mm-hmm. And I love the yeah I love the, the the food the French food and everything like trying new stuff, um, yeah. and it's tough for me to 
you know, to be really serious and really uh, consistent, you know, all year. Yeah. Because uh, I just love, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then another question I got, which I think is really good by Ricky. Shout out to you for the question. But who has been more influential, Linku or Gaultier? For you. Um, I mean, it's, it's totally different. Mm. Uh, Thierry was a bit before, of course. Um, I was lucky enough to, to share the court with him for, for many years, mm -hmm. but I was still young, so I couldn't really compete a hundred percent with him. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Greg, Greg. Greg was my idol, of course, when mm. I was young. Uh, Thierry was just, uh, uh, for me, so impressive uh, physically and the, the, the amount of work he could put in, his, in himself uh, was just a joke. Uh, everything was just so accurate. Uh, um, every training was like 100% commitment all the time. Uh, Greg was different. Uh, Greg is, uh, I just, I just love this game. Mm. Um, and we could share as well so many times on court, even during the, the, the European teams, the world team. Yeah. And having him in the, in, having him in the team, giving me some advice, uh, sharing the room all the time in tournaments. Yeah. Uh, of course was a huge help. Uh, so it's, I don't know. I've, I've, I had both of them in my side and I was lucky and I had some, yeah, like a few years ago, I used to work a little bit with Thierry as well when I was, oh. I was going in, in Boston as well sometimes. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm trying to take a little bit of but, both of them. Yeah. And, and they were so good for squash in France, of course. And yeah. Being, being world champion, uh, it's not for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, uh, I'm yeah. trying to to raise the flag, uh, yeah. the French flag, uh, as much as I can. But it's not easy against this. <laughs> <to get, yeah. laughs> that's that's very fair. Um, but yeah, okay, I'm gonna wrap it up there, folks. Uh, thanks, Greg, for doing this, even though with the COVID situation. But yeah. I appreciate it a lot. That was so much fun. Thanks. Thanks a lot.